Just a few weeks ago, DARPA quietly unveiled a new high-speed missile program called Gambit. And as far-reaching as Gambit's implications may be, it's the engine powering it that could really change the game. Rotation detonation engines could power missiles to fly further, faster than ever before, but that's just the beginning. They could eventually power fighters and even warships. Let's dive into this technology. I'm Alex Hollings, and this is Air Power. The propulsion systems known as rotation detonation engines have the potential to be lighter than existing jet engines, while offering a significant boost in power output, range, and fuel efficiency. And DARPA's new Gambit missile is really just one of a number of programs that are placing a renewed focus on RDE technology. Though, for the most part, these systems have managed to fly under the media's radar. That is, except for Aviation Week and Space Technology Defense Editor Steve Trimble, who I've definitely mentioned in a few videos before. He's covered these recent developments at length, and he was kind enough to discuss that work with me as I tried to better wrap my head around just how big a deal this technology could really be. These rotation detonation engines might not be all that common in discussion today, but with an ongoing hypersonic arms race of sorts and America's renewed focus on deterring near peers, this technology could really help offset a number of tactical or strategic advantages presented by America's opponents in places like Europe and the Pacific, and they may be closer to fruition than you might think. But enough hype, let's dive into these rotation detonation engines, because they've been the subject of theory and speculation now for literally decades, but to date they have yet to cross the barrier between theory and practical application. Because they promise to be a lot more efficient than traditional jet engines, they could provide missile applications with a big boost in range and speed, but that could also mean fielding smaller weapons that are capable of achieving the same speeds and ranges as today's in-service weapons. In aircraft applications like jet fighters, rotation detonation engines could offer similar benefits to missiles in terms of range and speed, while potentially reducing maintenance requirements. Fighters in particular rely on afterburners, which effectively fire hose fuel into the engine's exhaust stream for added thrust, which, you might imagine, really quickly depletes fuel stores and reduces the fighter's range. RDEs could potentially allow for a similar boost in thrust with a big reduction in that fuel penalty, and that's one of the programs that's going on right now. But where this technology could probably be most useful is in powering the Navy's future non-nuclear surface vessels, where they would provide increased power production, range, and speed while having a huge impact on the Navy's budgetary bottom line, according to their own assessments. And making it all happen really comes down to one word. Detonation. The concept behind rotation detonation engines dates all the way back to the 50s. In the US, Arthur Nichols, a professor emeritus of aerospace engineering at the University of Michigan, was among the first to attempt to develop a working RDE engine. But to really understand how an RDE engine works, we've got to talk about the concepts that it's built upon, because in a lot of ways, RDE engines are an extension of the concept behind pulse detonation engines, which are, in themselves, an extension of pulse jets. And I realize that's confusing, but don't worry, we're going to break it down. Pulse jet engines work by mixing air and fuel within a combustion chamber and then igniting the mixture to fire out of a nozzle in rapid pulses, rather than under constant combustion like you might find in other jet engines. In a way, they work a bit like the cylinder head in your car's engine, except without an engine block beneath them. Valves open for the air and fuel mixture to go in, and when they close, a spark plug ignites that mixture. But instead of that burning mixture pressing a piston down, it pushes out the exhaust and provides propulsion. Okay, so far so good, but to make the jump from pulse jets to pulse detonation engines, we're going to have to learn some vocab words, because the combustion process that you're familiar with from engines like this and most combustion-based engines in general is deflagration, which is really just a fancy word for heating an air-fuel mixture until it ignites and burns away rapidly, but importantly, 
subsonically. The combustion process, or the miniature explosions that take place inside your car's engine and inside most jet engines, are all subsonic explosions. And that's where a pulse detonation engine differs from a pulse jet, because it doesn't leverage deflagration, it uses detonation. While deflagration speaks to the ignition and subsonic burning of an air-fuel mixture, detonation is supersonic. When the air and fuel are mixed in a pulse detonation engine, they're ignited, creating deflagration just like you're accustomed to. But then, within the longer exhaust tube, a powerful pressure wave compresses the unburnt fuel ahead of that ignition, heating it above ignition temperatures in what is known as the deflagration to detonation transition, or DDT. In other words, rather than burning through the fuel rapidly, it detonates, producing more thrust from the same amount of fuel an explosion rather than a very rapid burn. But just in case my definition didn't do it for you, which is fair because I am not a scientist, I reached out to Dr. Chris Combs, who's a D. Howard Endowed Assistant Professor of Hypersonic and Aerospace Engineering at the University of Texas, San Antonio. Now, Dr. Combs knows his stuff, and he also runs a great Twitter account that I highly recommend you follow. And he summed up the value of detonation very succinctly for me. The detonation process is a more rapid and efficient extraction of energy from your fuel from a thermodynamic standpoint when compared to deflagration. And Dr. Combs isn't kidding. According to Steve Trimble's research, the deflagration wave used by most of our engines travels at around 10 meters per second, which certainly isn't slow, but a detonation wave travels up to 2,000 meters per second. So, while a pulse detonation engine still produces propulsion in pulses, it can travel significantly faster, believed to be up to around Mach 5. In May of 2008, the Air Force Research Laboratory made history by building the world's first crude pulse detonation-powered aircraft using a scaled composites home-build plane called the Long EZ. With test pilot Pete Siebold at the stick, it didn't set any crazy records. It managed to speed a bit better than 120 miles per hour and reached altitudes between 60 and 100 feet, but it was an important proof of concept. And as efficient as these pulse detonation engines are, they're still under development for some applications, a rotation detonation engine would be even more effective. But many within the academic and engineering communities questioned whether you could even build one until fairly recently. Now that we understand pulse jets and pulse detonation engines, we can finally dive into rotation detonation engines, which take this detonation concept to the next level. Rather than having the detonation wave travel out the back of the aircraft as propulsion, RDEs have it travel around a circular channel within the engine itself. Fuel and oxidizers are added to the channel through small holes, which are then struck and ignited by that rapidly circling detonation wave. The result is an engine that produces continuous thrust rather than thrust in pulses, while still offering the improved efficiency of a detonation engine. Many rotation detonation engines have more than one detonation wave circling the chamber at the same time. And as Trimble explains, RDEs see pressure increase during detonation, whereas traditional jet engines like the ones we put in cruise missiles and fighters today see a total pressure loss during combustion. This makes them even more efficient than pulse detonation engines, which need the combustion chamber to be purged and refilled for each pulse. This time, I'll quote Steve Trimble directly. In theory, RDE is a bit like the leap from turbojets to turbofans in the 1960s, but for high supersonic vehicles. It should give you a big jump in specific impulse or fuel efficiency. And if you can figure out how to package it in a way that doesn't make things significantly heavier or less aerodynamic, you should be able to get a nice range boost out of it too. And in 2020, RDEs made the leap off the page and into real life, when a team out of the University of Central Florida, working alongside the Air Force Research Laboratory, successfully built and tested the world's first working rotation detonation engine, and it continued firing right up until they cut the fuel off, effectively proving that the concept is possible. The three-inch copper test rig that they developed successfully produced 200 pounds of thrust in their laboratory conditions. 
Since then, a number of other programs have followed suit, with noted engine manufacturer Pratt & Whitney among those leading the charge, and other programs in places like Japan and Australia have also made really significant strides in this realm. Now that we know how these engines work, let's talk about how to stick them into a weapon. Because on July 18th, DARPA released a special notice pertaining to their new Gambit missile program, announcing a proposer's day for firms to get more information about this effort and its aims. Within the notice, DARPA included a description of the program and its objectives, as well as their anticipated timeline from inception to flight test. I'll quote that notice here. The objective of the Gambit program is to develop and demonstrate a novel rotating detonation engine propulsion system that enables a mass-producible, low-cost, high-supersonic, long-range weapon for air-to-ground strike in an anti-access area denial environment. The program aims to be conducted in two 18-month phases. The first will entail competitors completing their preliminary designs with some limited testing, and the second would finalize designs and culminate in full-scale flight tests of an RDE system. While the release offers scant details on the overarching goals of Gambit, some of the language within the announcement point towards specific challenges America's defense apparatus currently finds itself facing. The reference to Gambit's use in an anti-access area denial environment could certainly pertain to anywhere American forces are squaring off against a near-peer adversary. But there's one environment that's been the focus of multiple defense efforts in recent years, the 1,000-mile-plus area denial bubble extending from Chinese shores, thanks to a growing array of anti-ship weapon systems, including hypersonic ones. This topic warrants a video of its own, and if you'd like one, let me know, and I'll put one together. But suffice to say that both the F-35 and the F-A-18 Super Hornet have a combat radius of less than 650 miles, and that means America's carriers couldn't launch combat sorties against China without sailing its carriers directly into harm's way. I'll quote Steve Trimble here one more time. That is probably most useful for the U.S. Navy, which needs to find a way to equip fighters with long-range, high-speed cruise missiles that are small enough to squeeze onto an aircraft carrier's weapon elevators and land back on the carrier under a fighter's wing without slamming into the deck. It seems pretty clear that Gambit could have real strategic value if DARPA can get it off the ground, but it's not the first new weapon program to leverage rotation detonation engine technology. According to the Air Force Research Lab, RDE technology could make high-speed weapons much more affordable, which is of particular import following a recent Defense Department analysis that indicated the hypersonic weapons in development for the Air Force may cost as much as $106 million dollars a piece. According to a list of efforts supported by the Pentagon's High Performance Computing Modernization Program in 2022, the Air Force Research Lab has begun development on at least three different RDE weapons or demonstrators. One aims to field a liquid-fueled rotating detonation scramjet that will power an air-to-surface missile that can be carried internally by fifth-generation fighters. Another will leverage solid fuel for an air-to-air -air missile, and a third effort aims to develop a vehicle for free jet testing on the ground. And as I mentioned before, RDE technology could also lead to smaller weapons that offer the same range and speed as today's missiles, which could allow stealth aircraft like the F-35 to carry more munitions inside their internal weapons bays. Likewise, missiles of the same size as today's could fly further faster, which has far-reaching benefits in both air-to-air -air and air-to-surface operations. But let's think bigger than missiles, because among the weapon-oriented programs being developed by the Air Force Research Lab is another rotation detonation enterprise that could offer America's fighters a big boost in range and speed, an RDE that could be used in place of a fighter's afterburners. An afterburner effectively combines the remaining oxygen leaving the jet engine with more fuel by spraying fuel directly into the outflow of exhaust. Needless to say, this method of increasing thrust takes a heavy toll on the aircraft's fuel stores, forcing pilots to choose between speed and range or loiter time. A rotation detonation engine afterburner could provide an increase in thrust while leveraging the design's inherent efficiency, providing the same gains for less fuel expended. In the longer term, air-breathing RDEs could even find their way into the fuselage of aircraft as the primary means of propulsion, 
But not all the potential applications for RDEs are up in the sky. Some of the most promising may actually be out at sea. While the Navy's aircraft carriers and submarines are famously nuclear-powered, the rest of the fleet still runs on good old-fashioned F-76 Marine diesel. An estimated 86 million barrels worth of it in 2016 alone. So it may come as little surprise to you that the Navy is very interested in this approach to a high-efficiency engine. In fact, they filed their own patent for a rotary detonation engine as far back as 1982. According to the Navy in 2012, rotation detonation engines could increase a warship's thrust by 10% and reduce fuel consumption by 25%, giving them more speed and range for the fuel expended. In 2012, that kind of improvement was projected to result in a savings of $300 to $400 million per year which equates to around 387 to 516 million in today's dollars. The truth is, rotation detonation engines could help fighters fly further, missiles fly faster, ships sail longer, and even rocket launches become cheaper. There aren't many places in America's defense apparatus that this forward-reaching tech couldn't benefit. And while for many years the question surrounding RDEs had always been if, now, it looks an awful lot like the question is just when. And with that ends yet another edition of Air Power from Sandbox News. I'm Alex Hollings. Make sure you swing by sandboxnews.com today and every day for all the latest in news, entertainment, and motivation from all around the force. If you got anything out of today's video, make sure to click like and subscribe down below and leave me a comment so I know what I should cover next. And of course, don't forget to tap on that bell icon so you never miss a drop from Sandbox News.